Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. The old dragons of the tree. So this starts off, and we've seen these style of mob fights in From Games before. The Royal Rats, the Celestial Emissary. These ones are sick. Whether it's stagnation causing the sickness, or whether it ties to the waters and Ashina depths, or it's the cause of the water itself uh, to become poisonous, or maybe it's what's making the Mibu villagers sick. Runoff of their own illness. Oh, that's so cool! That's a unique, a unique plunging attack for this fight. So for each one of these pale ones that we strike down, the health bar goes down just a little bit. And eventually, instead of the pale ones, a few of these black ones take their place. They're more aggressive. They will come after you directly. Remember, there's also a stagnation-born disease called Dragon Rot. But this part of the fight is not why I think this is one of the coolest fights in the game. It's this. It's not just a tree. It's the Ever Blossom Tree, and it's not just the Ever Blossom Tree. The Ever Blossom Tree is the Divine Dragon. Also, this is a very nameless King Arena. You notice how one of these trees in front of us is glowing. It has these little strands of lightning channeling to it. And that's because. We grapple up atop it and use the sword as a lightning rod and then parry the lightning at him. This is essentially a gimmick fight, but it is such a cool gimmick fight. The spectacle of this one. <laughs> you see little bits of Storm King in here. Jump it again. Also, he's a scaleless white dragon, make of that what you will. And the sword that he uses is a really famous Japanese sword called the Seven Branch Sword that was gifted to Japan from Korea, which geographically is west of Japan. Remember, the dragon is said to have come from the west. Also, one arm. It is missing an arm. Takeru brought the Ever Blossom from the Divine Realm to Ashna and planted it, right? Owl cut a branch off of the tree and the tree withered and died. The Divine Dragon is the dragon of the Ever Blossom. And missing an arm, a branch. The Ever Blossom tree was his left arm or that branch that Owl cut. Oh, I never dodged that in time. <laughs> and this is really the only dangerous part of the fight. Now the shape of this dragon, the color of it, does, re does it remind you of some of the Okami features? Oh! The Okami, the nobles, they're trying to become more like the divine dragon, or to become dragons themselves. 
that's how they are seeking immortality. To go from humanoid to carps to dragons. Remember the carps have humanoid teeth? They transformed. Also, because it's divine and immortal, only the mortal blade can harm it. Can cut it. We cut into its tear ducts to get the gracious gift of tears. The tears of the divine dragon. The gracious gift of tears is also the true name of the mortal blade. Oh, there's so much more to get into with this. Everything was guarding against our intrusion, or intrusion from any outsiders. The steps to get to the Divine Realm are... Oh, the Divine Dragon, ancient deity of the Everblossom. The body of the Divine Dragon is eternal, and its tears once shed will maintain their form and moisture in perpetuity. Should one of the dragon's heritage partake of the dragon's tears, immortal severance will be reified. We are not going to interact with anything in here. We'll just take a look at Emma hunched over an apparently dead, or at least unconscious, Ishin Ashina. But we're not going to interact with any of them, because we do not want to trigger any of the endgame yet. The Divine Dragon of the Everblossom came from the West long ago, eventually making its way to this land. Some parts of Ashina are exceedingly old. Water coursing through, their, through her ancient rocks and soil allowed the dragon to take root. Like I was saying, everything was to prohibit intrusion into the Divine Realm and the Fountainhead Palace. Uh, it was incredibly prohibitively difficult and complex to get there. Also, all those steps are basically just to make us smell like the Okami clan, who do belong there. All those ingredients were so we would have their scent. Then the Rope Golem, uh, that's based on a Shinto object called a Shimanawa, which are thick cords of rope that ward off evil. Uh, there's the Okami Priestess you encounter immediately in the in, um, in the Fountainhead Palace, the true monk. By the way, there's a Reddit post that elaborates on her a little bit more. Uh, we know her name is Priestess Yao. Apparently, uh, that is a reference to Yao Bakuni, whose father was said to have fed her mermaid flesh, flesh so she would become immortal. She went on to live for 800 years, according to the myths. Now some of the features of this place are starting to make a lot more sense, right? And the carps. And we're not done with that. We're still in Fountainhead Palace for a reason. I skipped something uh, last time with intent. And now we're going to come back for that. So we are going to jump down here. You can see there's even a sculptor's idol that we never came to. Uh, further on. First, I don't think there's anything too important back here, but we want to be thorough. We want to explore as extensively as possible. When given the chance. I think there's... Uh, if I remember right, there's just some sugar or maybe divine confetti or divine grass or something like that. Yeah, it's just Akko sugar. Guarded by two dogs. One here, and then the one around the corner from it. But way more importantly is this. We're going to finish off the side quest for uh, the, the noble's daughters. Because right over there is the father. Near these big gongs. Feed it. The bell 
calls it master. And so you might think when he says ring the bells, he's talking about beating these, because they look like gongs, or drums or something. Nope, actually it's just this small little humble bell over here. But just remember, he calls the great colored carp master. Also, it looks suspiciously like on top of having human teeth. Looks like those sockets are empty, right? His eye sockets? Looks eyeless. In fact... Hard to tell, but it also looks like the attendant has no eyes. So we get one treasure carp scale for feeding the carp the first time using precious bait. We feed it a second time, and then go back to the attendant. We get three this time, and if you feed him again after you get your four uh, scales, you'll get some new dialogue from the attendant. Don't overfeed him, says the attendant. Oh, and some Ungo sugar. We are not done with this side quest, not by a long shot yet. But we noticed how both of them seem to be eyeless. Definitely the great carp. Do you remember when we were in Mibu Village proper? When we dove down into the lake in the center of the town? We found a carp there with glowing red eyes. And it was said that that carp could never possess enough scales to become a master. Just think on that for a sec. As we come back to Mibu Village to do something else. We found uh, Water of the Palace last time in the Fountainhead Palace. And we remember there was a real thirsty fella uh, here in Mibu Village. He was the head priest of the village, the one who was compelling and urging everyone. We never got this heavy coin purse? Wow. Uh, compelling and urging everyone here to partake of this sake. The sake that just causes them unquenchable, relentless thirst. And how deformed these guys are. Oh, please, please, accept us as your humble servant. Hello. Take this. Oh, this fragrance. Such an esteemed aroma. Oh. Finally, we may be accepted. We may serve as their humble servants. <laughs> at last, at long last, you. Let me give you this. More Dragon Spring Sake. You will surrender it to me. Oh, 
This man gulps hard. There is not even that much in that cup. He's just going to town making gross noises. Oh, come on, let me around. This is not strictly part of the uh, the Great Carp side quest. This is something else, but this is going to help us with that. Plus, it's going to give even more context. And we love our context. First, we have to reload the area, or rest. And then go back and see how satisfied he is with the water of the palace, the pure water of the fountainhead. Well, not only did it turn him into a gross noble, it also grew a flute out of his palms. But he's immediately hostile to us. And so he gotta die. But, from his corpse, we do get five additional treasure carp scales. Uh, I went back and scoured a few lakes for treasure carps between episodes, so that gives us exactly enough treasure carp scales to do everything we've got to do. Uh, if I recall correctly, there are 46 available treasure carp scales in a single uh, playthrough. We need 40. And what's this? No more sculptor. Just up and left his tools behind. No Emma here either. But we can apparently proficiently use... Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I forgot to ever get Samimaru. Well, we'll get that next time. Because <laughs> uh, that's the only way to do it. For now, we're going to get Suzaku's Lotus Umbrella. Um... Now hold off on the Phantom Kunai real quick. That's why I keep calling it a Kunai, because the final upgrade is one. Where is the thing that I am looking for? The finger whistle. Oh, Mountain Echo. Malcontent. We don't have enough resources for the Malcontent, which I really would like. I'm going to have to get some of whatever I'm missing between episodes. So for now, we'll get the Phantom Kunai. Just going to get four. Four of whatever that is. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. What thought was I in the middle of? Aw, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, it sounds about right. Uh, yeah, right. There are 46 or so uh, scales in the game. And look at this. Once again, all of the idols in Ashna Castle are blacked out, just like the last time we made a major story progression in the game. Also, did you notice the time of day changed again? We need 40. We have uh, 40. Or rather, we have 40 minus whatever we've already spent at the Pot Nobles. Also, want to come back to the Memorial Mob in the Abandoned Dungeon so we can get that mask fragment, which means we have one more mask fragment to get, the one at the Pot Noble back in Fountainhead Pal uh, Palace. First, back to the Hirata Estate for one of the two Pot Nobles. We didn't quite exhaust this one's inventory. Uh, we got the important thing from him, which is his mask fragment, and we'll actually be seeing what those mask fragments are for today. Uh, not quite yet. We're revisiting him because we're just going to get this out of the way. There is a point to exhausting his inventory and the other ones. And we have just enough scales to do that. You have the aroma of the divine realm. Been so kind to me. Very well. I give this to you now. This is truly precious bait. If bait has hair, you know it's something truly special. 
the Harada noble in the in the pot is obsessed with thoughts of becoming a master. He who receives the scales of the carp becomes closer to the carp himself. I bestow into you my secret treasure. Unto you, whoops. Bring it to the great carp of the divine realm. Then I will finally become a carp and bestow upon you my secret treasure. Secret. You still have my bring it to the great do that. I'm waiting. I'm used to waiting at this point. So many secrets. <laughs> he has so many secrets to share with us. I don't know if, because of the loading, it would be faster to just, uh, homeward idle. But that also feels extremely lazy for some reason. <laughs> Nope, now I know it would have been faster to do that. Either way, we're here. We have another Pot Noble to visit. We have more items to purchase and a Dragon Mask to get. Back to Fountainhead Palace again. This is really going to take us all over the place today, but gotta do it. There's that other mask fragment, some lapis lazuli, and a dragon's blood droplet, and that is exactly enough. You there, if you ever happen across another part like mine, ignore any requests he makes of you. He's the shame of our clan. He's a treasonous villain who attempted to kill the great cop for his own benefit. <laughs> Most of my scales have returned. And I owe it all to you. Finally, the time has come for him to pay the price for his crime. But scales are priceless. It's almost as if I'm priceless too. <laughs> you there, you've done a remarkable job thus far. I feel that I can rely on you. Will you listen to my tale? Or rather, my secret? Sure. Secret. He also gives us truly precious bait. And I'll bestow upon you the palace's secret treasure. Even if things take a turn for the worse, be sure not to confuse my bait for his. He's nothing more than a vile traitor. <laughs> Even if things be Hello again. What? So we have oh a dragon's head dancing mask, made whole by piecing the fragments back together, grants the ability to exchange skill points for attack power in the sculptor's idol menu. Uh, the Okami warrior women would wear this to the Fountainhead Palace. There, they would dance as an offering to the dragon. Mysteriously, that ritual left them brimming with vigor. So that's what the dragon mask allows us to do. Five points gets us an attack power upgrade, which I will happily, happily do since I don't care for most of the skills in the trees. And a lot of them are just like more spirit emblems. Spirit emblems go up by one. It's a shame we took so long to get this. It could have helped before, but what are you gonna do? It would have taken us this long to get the other fragment of the mask anyway. So Koromori accuses the other pot noble of being a vile traitor and now we have two baits to choose from. We can feed him regular precious bait again or one of the two truly precious baits. Harunaga was the one he accused of being a traitor. Let's assume that he's on the level. Ah, okay. So he has nothing to say. Unless we rest.
And now he changes positions. He's searching. Master. 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 Where are you? Oh, that is harrowing. So, by chance, do you remember how we found those green larval looking worm things picking the cart bones at the bottom of the lake? Those same green things are seen in the item uh, picture for the truly precious bait. Okay, admittedly, I forgot where to go for a bit and just spent like four or five minutes swimming around the lake, which is not where I should be. I should actually go back to the Sunken Valley to the Guardian Apes watering hole. <laughs> Where we find that it is nighttime again. We saw that before in uh, the dilapidated temple, but we also find the corpse of the great carp and his horrible, horrible teeth. He swam downstream and died. Priceless white whisker taken from the great colored carp. While the great carp is naturally immortal, if killed, its whiskers can be plucked. The sound of the whisker being removed is surely music to the ears of certain people. Some would feel relief in the sound of their mission being completed. Others, the joy of having their hearts Desire granted. The truly precious bait poisons the carp, and it does it no matter which pot noble you trust, by the way. So here's what I'm thinking. Those green larval worms? I think they're larval forms of the centipedes, and that's how they evolve and become the immortal centipedes, by consuming an immortal carp. Ooh. Now, we are done with the daughter's side quests. And in true Miyazaki fashion, when you no longer have a purpose in life, your life ends. You've been through so much, Father, though it may not be for eternity. My sister and I will always be with you. So please, Father, rest now. Now, what about the pot nobles? Oh, some lapis lazuli. But where did he go? Now that we've carried out this murder for him. Well, this is a new brightly colored red carp down here. And we can't target it and there's a prompt. Oh, but first, red eyes.
There's nothing to trade to him. Or for, from. Can't hurt it either. But what about the other one? Hmm. <laughs> Told you things are coming together. Oops. And one more time into the Harada estate. And then after that. We have just a handful of loose ends, and it's on to the end game, or end games, since there are still three endings, all to see. The end of this game comes up on you fast. You think that Fountainhead Palace is going to be kind of Anne Orlando, the halfway mark, but it's, uh way more of a final dungeon than anything. The other Pod Noble's also gone. This one... Mm, no carp to be found. So, thank you all for watching, and you're all worthy of my grace. 